Hello, my name is Robbie Morrison. I'm here to talk about energy system modelling and in particular the, the open component. I started campaigning for climate protection in 1990. I began high resolution national energy system modelling in 1995, pretty much at the outset of that paradigm. Released the first open source framework in 2003 named DECO. I didn't write the code base, but I was the lead maintainer at that time. I've been active in a loose collection called the Open Energy Modeling Initiative since 2016. And I wrote up some of these uh, issues um, uh, for publication in 2018, and you'll see the citation there. I'm not going to talk very much about energy system modeling per se, but they typically look out to 2050 um, and these days are set to net zero. They are high resolution and contiguous time, so early time steps um, is at the maximum. Um, the reason for this is that renewables in particular are sensitive um, to uh, time resolution, um, spatial resolution, um, and so forth. There, there are three um, aspects to energy system modeling. There's a framework, that's the, that's the software component. These days often written in Python. The data sets, which are um, increasingly um, challenging as the, as the models demand um, better, more extensive um, and higher quality data. Legal incumbents is also an issue. Um, and then the third part of the framework are the scenarios. Um, so these, um, this form of, of analysis um, uh, moves forward by, by proposing scenarios and testing them against uh, a reference case. In the center of this um, are our values and concerns, which don't get enough um, airplay, um, but they're starting to get more these days, which is useful. And I particularly want to bring up the issue of semantic standards in the context of this meeting. Um, I believe people have worked on technical standards, but the, um, the, the semantic standards that underpin both the data sets and the, and the, the, the meanings, if you like, in the, in, the, in the coded frameworks are important and they have to be, in my view, um, fully open. Otherwise, we will end up with uh, proprietary standards tainting, tainting our um, frameworks and, and data sets. Now, one of, one of the interesting questions at the moment, are, are we on the cusp of open, uh, particularly open source, um, being the uh, dominant paradigm um, in this domain? And there are indications that, that's a, that, that you can support that statement. Um, so I divide roughly five camps uh, in terms of the, the, the kind of context the frameworks are developed. And there are government models, there are consortium models, which are normally run by uh, um, collections of um, government agencies. There are the single institution models, uh, often developed um, within scientific institutions. The proprietary models and the models that are developed in academia. Now, running down that list very briefly, the government models are increasingly being open. Um, there's a major effort in the US at the moment through the Department of Energy to uh, make their um, key policy models um, open source. And I anticipate we'll see that happen in, in this um, term of office. The consortium models, somewhat to my surprise, have actually, have actually moved to being most of them being open. Um, the Times model would be the, the most notable and the Times model generator has been under a GNU license um, for about three years now. The single institution models are unlikely to be open unless they're forced open by um, funding um, or commissioning agencies. Um, so I think we'll see them um, in, in, the, in being the last to um, come, come to the party, if you like. Um, the proprietary models aren't very developed in this particular area, so I don't really see them as, uh, as really much of an issue. And then uh, models in academia are, are very clearly um, moving to open source projects and trying to build communities um, and uh, make progress in that direction. 
But this is quite a journey. It's not only just the open source frameworks, it's also the genuinely open data and the scenarios also have to be um, um, open and in uh, uh, unprotected databases. If uh, you want some background, I suggest you look up Wikipedia under the tag Open Energy System Models. Uh, just to give you one example that connects back to Sweden, uh, the Osmosis project is one of the major projects in this domain and it was developed at um, KTH Stockholm by Mark Howells uh, back in the um, mid to late 2000s. Um, it's now mostly um, supported under the UK Climate Compatible Growth Program. It, uh, it's a little bit unusual um, in that it was written in a mathematical programming language, namely GNU MathProg. Um, most of the models these days are, are written in, um, in interpreted languages like uh, Python or sometimes Julia. Osmosis offers starter kits for the entire world and it's increasingly being used in Sub-Saharan Africa, Central and South America, South Asia and elsewhere in the Global South. Um, and I just wanted to flag that as a, a very useful um, dynamic that these models are now um, available to researchers um, and others in the Global South without the, without the need um, to, to buy expensive licenses. Um, the one caveat is that the solvers are, that, that underpin most of these models are, um, are available in open source and a commercial um, context, but the commercial solvers still outperform the open source solvers by quite some margin. Uh, to come back to the original question, are public sector organisations using open energy system modelling to tr transition to net zero? Um, the short answer to that, if we restrict ourselves to municipal um, public sector organisations, is, is, is no, not, not especially. Um, in, in contrast, uh, the national and regional analysis is well developed um, and is starting to be used um, officially um, at, at all sorts of levels. Um, the European Union, for example, um, national governments through Europe uh, and so forth. And as I mentioned earlier, that analysis is now spilling over into the Global South. So to look at municipalities, I want to pick up three examples listed there and uh, I'll move through them in order. Uh, so the DECO framework, the one I worked on, um, which was coded in C++, was applied to a municipal facility in Würzburg uh, that was a mixture between the local energy um, supplier um, that was community owned, um, the university, a consultancy and other parties. Um, and um, so that really classes, I guess, as one of the first examples of a, muni a municipality, in, in, in essence, um, using these kind of frameworks um, to, to analyse um, options, um, feasibilities and so forth. The next one I want to mention is uh, a PIPES study that was applied to um, Spitsbergen in Norway recently. Um, and some details are listed on the slide. Um, Pipeser is one of the major frameworks and was developed um, more or less at the Technical University of Berlin by Tom Brown and uh, his team. Um, there are still negotiations, and this is a common story, um, about whether this, the results of the study and the um, tooling that was used for the study will um, be made fully public and fully open. Um, so that's an ongoing discussion in this case. The third project I want to talk about is a CityLearn project uh, based in Texas um, and uh, headed by Zoltan Nagy, uh, again written in Python, um, and they place a high emphasis on good package management and particularly the ease of use um, for prospective users. Um, so this is, this is picking up good software practice. Um, I'll just digress for a moment. It's widely held that academics write um, poor software, but I, I personally don't see that in, in the areas that I work in. So the City Learn project is based on machine learning. Um, its focus is behind the meter. 
um, which is a sort of a, a shorthand for talking about drilling right down into the user domain and focusing on both their decisioning and the kind of uh, systemic coordination that would that would yield um, real benefits. Um, so CityLearn has no municipal cooperations at present, but several are in planning, and I, I look forward to that being uh, the learning of those in, in due course. I'd like to bring this to a close. So I just have two, two final slides. Um, the, um, this domain of analysis is crucial for effective and rapid decarbonisation. I don't think there is any way really of exploring the kinds of pathways into the future um, without resorting to the numerical modelling of in various um, in its various uh, forms. Uh, in the community, the energy modelling community, it's interesting now that ethical matters of things like covering things like distribution and fairness are starting to be uh, tackled by practitioners. Um, I guess this is a sign of uh, the, the sector maturing or the domain maturing, um, and I'm really quite pleased to see that. Another uh, key theme is that um, the energy domain, when analysed, is increasingly being linked to future climate, of course, um, but also uh, to land and land use change, um, water use, uh, competing water use in many cases for calling nuclear power stations or driving hydro or similar. Um, the mobility sector, um, with the, all the all, all the changes to um, e-mobility and uh, storage potentials, um, again behind the meter, um, and so forth. So just a general expansion of the idea of what the system is. Um, open methods are starting to be used at the municipal level, um, but only just starting to be used. Um, and I look forward to, to, to more interest in this area. The converse is true for national and regional studies. Uh, open, the open uh, source, open science um, doctrine is well established um, for these kinds of studies. I didn't cover any closed source analysis in this review, um, so the, just note that caveat. Um, and I find the spill out into the global south, which I, I, I have a watching brief on, I guess, um, to be very encouraging. Uh, to close, this is a very fleeting tour, um, admittedly. Um, the climate crisis is upon us, there's no question. Um, I've watched this for 33 years. It was a modelled um, prospect for most of that, but, but now the data is coming in. And um, to, be, to be quite honest, it's, um, it's horrifying. Um, there's a substantial community devoted to open energy system analysis, namely the Open Energy Modelling Initiative, um, which holds um, occasional workshops and uh, tries to progress some of the overarching issues, um, particularly around data and data standards. Um, so I'm going to finish there. Um, I'm just going to say thank you for the opportunity to present, and I'm very happy to be contacted um, via email should um, people wish to follow up any of these ideas. Um, so thank you very much.